Setting up any bike can take a little bit of time and experience uh, to make it comfortable for you, but also to make it work as best as possible for the type of riding you do. So here's five easy ways to change the way your e-mountain bike rides. The first one is looking at your handlebars. So height, width, rise, sweep, roll back, all sorts of different variables with your handlebars to make sure that basically your hands are in the correct position or as correct as possible. With all these bike setup things, there's always a bit of a compromise. You can find that your sort of preferred setup is gonna work really well for one thing, but not as well for another. So it's trying to find the best compromise with everything really. And the first thing I look at when I get a bike is actually the bar height. So two different ways of doing this. You can either change the amount of spaces underneath your stem to bring it up or down, or you can change the handlebars. You find bars with different amounts of rise, um, and they suit different types of things. Basically, if you look at cross-country racers, they'll have quite a low handlebar height because they sort of optimize their bike for climbing. So getting that weight further forward on the bike keeps more weight on the front wheel, and keeps that bike climbing nicely. Now that is something to think about with an e-bike because you're likely to spend you know, a good amount of time riding up technical uh, ascents. So too far, um, too much weight to the back wheel isn't gonna help. So bar height, making it sort of balanced to the front for climbing, but to the back for being comfortable in ascents is quite an important thing. You may have noticed I have these very fancy uh, Canyon carbon handlebars, but it's a one piece bar and stem. Something we've seen sort of hit the mountain bike market in the last year or two. Obviously from the road bikes, uh, they've had these for years, but you know, the, I, some people don't like these. I actually love these things. I think they look great. It's really well integrated, especially with the e-bike. I've got my display and all the cables going into the bar there. So very nice and clean. Obviously with this, you can't change the stem length, bar height, things like that. Whatever you get is stuck. Also, some people mess around with their bar roll. By, mean, by that, I mean where you undo the, the front plate on the stem, you can roll the bar one way or other. Personally, when I get a bike, I set them directly up anyway, which is how these are basically the same. So I'm not bothered about that. What I do with a set of bars is then I cut them down to my size, which is 760 millimeters. I find just for me, my type of riding, my shoulder width, uh, that's fine. Any wider, I feel like I smash my hands on trees and things. So that's sorted. Then for me, it's really important to get that bar height. Now looking underneath this stem, you can see another unusual thing. I've got this spacer here. That is for my child seat. So basically when I take my uh, boys for a ride, I just clip my child seat onto there. So ig ignore that for now. Basically that is the same as a normal spacer. So I like to run a decent amount of spaces underneath my bars. Like I say, the higher the bars are, the probably better it is for going down the hill, which is my preference, but the more I will compromise on climbing. And in that case, it means I've got to sort of get myself into a kind of uncomfortable position to get my weight forward for climbs, but I'd rather do that and have my bike go downhill nicely. Similar principles apply for stem length. So the shorter, the better it is for riding downhill. So 40 mil is probably the shortest you get nowadays, 40, 50 mil. Most people who prefer riding downhill have those uh, stem lengths. For climbing, going a bit uh, longer is better. Again, cross country, they have up to sort of 100 mil stems, getting that weight forward. On e-bikes, you don't really find them that long, probably 60 mil the longest, I would have thought. It's really easy to experiment with bar height, moving your stem spaces from below to above, just to move them up or down, it doesn't cost you anything. Then if you wanna start tweaking it a bit further, by new bars, new stems, of course that does cost, but start off with just moving the spaces. Tire choice is gonna make a massive difference to how your bike rides and also how it performs battery-wise as well. So you probably find that more aggressive riders go for more aggressive tires, so the more, uh, downhill stuff doing, bigger jumps, bigger drops, you know, ragging your bike down a hill, you'll want a grippy tire. And that's sort of the riding I like to do, so that's sort of tires I go for. But there's so many different variables you can go for with tires, from compounds to tire tread, to construction. So I have just changed actually on this bike, I've just stuck a downhill casing tire on the back of the bike, whilst I've kept, what is it? It's an EXO up front, I believe. Yeah, EXO protection, so a slightly lighter one on the front. Basically because I hammer my rear tire, or most people do, the rear tire will take more of the pressure from hitting big rocks. So I'd rather have a tougher construction, basically a thicker sidewall on there, 
So I've got less risk of puncturing from ripping that tire because I do like to ride this bike on some pretty gnarly stuff. But I'm saving the weight slightly on having that slightly lighter tire, keeping it on the front. Basically, I did have two Exo tires on this and I've just put the Daniel casing on the back to suit me a little bit better. Also, I've changed a different uh, tire tread. So again, the more aggressive and the, the sort of softer the rubber, the more grip you're gonna have, but also the higher rolling resistance. So, you know, on an old school bike, you say, you know, it's gonna be harder to pedal. Basically, your bike's gonna be slower rolling on the flat. With an e-bike, obviously, that's gonna take more battery. So it's gonna be less efficient having the bigger, softer compound tires on there, but you will have more grip. If you're riding more cross country, more trail stuff, you probably don't need a downhill tire on the back. You can run two trail tires, lower tread, so you can get more range from your battery. There's even more variables with tires. I think they're quite a complicated business to be fair. I think something that you'll you know, get a bit more experience with. I think you'll, you'll never quite learn exactly what tires you should be running and what pressures you need. Obviously conditions are changing as well. So in the UK, obviously we're in autumn, coming into winter. I would definitely start to think about running a deeper tread on there, but also think about changing my pressures a little bit. Um, with an e-bike, obviously they're heavier than a normal bike. So for me, I want to run higher pressures anyway, because if I run too low pressures, the tire will start squirming around a little bit. And you also, again, risk um, rimming out. So slamming your tire into rocks and actually damaging the tire. So I'll run a couple more PSI anyway than a normal bike. And like I said earlier as well, I run the heavier tire on the back. So stiffer sidewalls is a tougher tire. I've actually gone down from one of the bigger, I think it was a 2.6 on the back in the XO. It was a DHF on the back. But I found that wider lightweight tire, when I was really pushing hard, I was starting to just move around too much. The tire was rolling. Whilst that sort of wider tire was great in dry conditions on climbs, it was really finding the grip when I was pushing it hard, especially into takeoffs and jumps. Just because that the big sort of um, less strong casing was starting to roll. That's why I've basically gone for the Daniel tire on the back. It's just a bit stiffer. Pressures, the great thing about them is you can play around with them. You know, make a little note of how hard you're running them and then go up or down a couple of PSI. Can really make a big difference to how your bike rides. A really easy thing to change is your saddle position. And this can make a, you know, quite a decent difference to how your bike climbs. Because basically if you move your saddle, let's say forward, and nose it down, it's actually gonna make your effective uh, seat tube angle steeper to make it, let's say, more comfortable for climbing. Um, so especially if you're riding steepish climbs, sat down, sort of the more you have your saddle forward and nose down, you know, the more comfortable the, you're going to sit sort of in front of almost the cranks and keep weight on that front wheel to keep it nicely planted. Now I don't go crazy with this because I find on the steepest of climbs I'm more, much more likely to stand up anyway. So definitely compared to a normal bike I'll have my seat slightly further forward in the rails so if you look at your your clamp on your seat post I'll slide it a bit further forward I've actually got those little sort of scale on here so you can tell where it is and I have my seat nice and flat you'll find a lot of e-bike saddles have that ramp on the back uh, this isn't actually an e-bike specific saddle on this bike at the moment but they have a bigger ramp which sort of is just gives you a nice bit of a cup almost to keep your weight further forward on the bike so definitely play around with this. Like I say, you can even nose the saddle down, so it's you know even lower than flat. But for me, I don't go too far because I'm more likely to stand off on those steepest of climbs. One of the biggest developments we've seen uh, with e-bikes the last few years is the sort of tunability of the motor settings. Gone are the days of having three or four settings that are just, that's what you get. Now you can tune them. And that really does make a difference to people so they can really decide what they want their bike to do. You know, you can choose how much assistance you have in each mode. And that's gonna suit different types of trails, you know, how big is the mountain that you're riding on. Some people just want 100% power on boost all the time. So it's just sort of tweaking your bike to suit the type of terrain that you're riding. Right, let us know down in the comments below any other cool tweaks you've done to customise your bike to really suit you. I know I went on about it quite a lot, but tyres for me are always the biggest one. And we've done uh, definitely a few videos in the past on you know things about tyre tread, pressures, all sorts. Over on GMBN and Tech, we've been to factories to show you how tyres are made as well, because there's all sorts of technology goes into these things. Thumbs up if you love spending some time tweaking your bike.